one unique life and today's a video in my career series over the radiology program is the specific radiology board exam ah you made it this far you've completed your didactic work you completed your your um, one year clinical or however long your clinical is and you're ready to sit for the board exam um, so I'm going to share with you how I was able to pass that radiology board exam with flying colors. Okay, not flying colors, but walking colors. Okay, I passed. And I, and I did well. It's just, it was, yeah. So <laughs> there's so much information that you are required to know. I mean, I'm going to show you how to hone, what to hone in on to make studying a little bit easier. So the first thing um, that I did was I had a study schedule. And I'm kind of going over some notes here. There is a such thing as overstudying, and I didn't think that was possible. I'm like, that makes no sense. The more you study, the better you off you are. Um, but I started out like studying literally from the moment I woke up, brushed my teeth, got ready, went to the library because I was so broke I couldn't afford internet. So I went to the library and I studied from the moment I woke up and the moment that the radio or the library had opened to the moment that they closed. And I overstudied. And so what I found is I was getting kind of sloppy and careless because I was tired and I was just, I wouldn't eat. I would barely drink anything and it just wasn't a good turnout for me. So I found myself getting sloppy. I couldn't read my handwriting and I'd be like super cocky. Like I know that I don't need to study that. So I had was definitely one of the individuals who overstudied. I um, then decided that during specific hours I would study um, based on the categories that I needed to know. Um, the areas that the ARRT.org provides that you're going to be tested on are um, patient care. There are going to be 33 questions on patient care. Uh, safety, there's going to be 53 questions on uh, safety. Language production, there are going to be 50 questions on that. And procedures are going to be 64 questions on that. I'll provide the link in the description uh, button for you to go ahead and print this out. You have to have this. If you want to pass this, just trust me. You want to go click on that link and make sure you print this one or two of these because you're going to put it to extreme use. Um, so what I did was I dedicated basically um, two to three weeks to study only patient care. And then the next two to three weeks, I would study only safety, blah, blah, blah. And so I did go to that link that I provided for you, and I printed that out, and I checked off each topic as I studied them. I mean, this thing is a gem for you. Like, if you don't pay this content um, any kind of um, attention, you, why would you do that? Like, do it, okay? Just trust me on that. So, um... So in the past, they will tell you like the specific amount of questions under each like main category. So in the past, they don't do this now. They would tell you like for patient care and under patient care, let's say if they talk about vital signs, there will be three on vital signs or whatever, three of the 33, but they don't do that anymore. They just kind of give you a general idea of what um, subcategories they'll be testing you on. Um, but like I said, they may or may not do that now, but again, click on that link and it will give you everything you need to know. So the topics that had a heavier question load, I would dedicate obviously more time to those areas or the areas that I found myself needing more time to study, which was like the image production stuff, because I was just so not interested in that. To be honest, I just wasn't. I just wanted to position the patient and I wanted the image to pop up. Okay. Just being honest. Um, so you want to give yourself enough time to make sure that you are prepared for the exam. I would not recommend cramming for this exam. I know there are some people that can get it in one shot and they can read it and they have a photogenic mind. This test will <laughs> will break you, I'm telling you, because I went in and I was like, I got this. And I, I mean, the first question, I was like back hunched and I'm sweating and all that. So um, I will say give yourself enough time to study. Trust me on that. So the number two thing is that study material does matter. To be honest, patient care, procedures, and safety, those areas don't change much. I mean, 
a patient's blood pressure 120 over 80 is typical and respirations usually 12 to 16 or so for I mean those things they they really are 16 to 20 they typically don't change um but image production and the equipment and things obviously that may change because they're ever evolving some of the uh, materials that I found useful is the correct tech book and a lot of other texts that have taken the test will attest to that. I'll also provide the link for correct tech in the description box below. Uh, this provides you basically up-to-date questions that are outlined by the ARRT. If I were you and what I did was I just made note cards, order that correct tech book, make note cards and test yourself. Have other people test you. I mean it's definitely worth the money. Um, the second thing is the Lang Radiology Review. I did find this um, to be very helpful because, again, it did provide the questions and the answers as outlined by the ARRT, and they provide the explanations to the questions. I know Correct Tech did not provide the explanations. I think they just gave you the answer, but this will tell you why this is the correct answer, which can then help you with how they may reword things on the test. So that's just making sure that you have a thorough knowledge over that specific topic. So the best, the best resource that I used was Kaplan's version of the radiology review. Back when I had it, um, it provided like a CD-ROM. I know like CDs are basically like ancient now. I don't know if they will provide it, but it provided a CD-ROM of like the simulated exam. Um, and it gave, it allowed you to feel how well you were perform. Um, so the exam on the CD, I felt that if I did well on that, then I'll do well on the exam and that proved to be true. So if you can pass the exam on the CD, well certainly you can pass the exam when you go to take it because that CD, will, I found it be 10 times harder. So, so they, I think I had read somewhere, if you average like a 75 or 80 on the CD, then you're a pla you'll pass the exam. Um, actual exam with flying colors so so again you have about four hours to complete this exam and I think that they have some pilot questions so some of the questions are not actually graded they're just kind of testing them out to see how well people do um, you have to have two approved pieces of identification as laid out um, as they on the ARRT website so you have to be on time you cannot be late when you go to take this exam, even when you check in online, which is actually a newer option to take your test on online. You can have a, um, a proctor that will watch your every move. Like I just took something online for the ART and I had to take my laptop and show them entire the entire room. And they were like, you need to unplug that. You need to get rid of that. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty highly guarded. If you don't have, if your ID is expire if you don't have the right ID they will turn you away and they will not bat an eye and then you have to pay that same fee I believe it's two hundred dollars again if you are more than um, 15 minutes late to you you're um, checking into your exam whether you're there in person or you're online they will turn you away and you have to pay the two hundred dollar fine and it's kind of embarrassing too you got to tell all your classmates I didn't take it because I didn't have the right ID or I was late so give yourself enough time have yourself familiarized with the testing center have yourself familiarized with how it works on the computer kind of do like a test run maybe the day before week before so that way you're familiar with how it'll work um, so the good thing is you'll walk away knowing that preliminary score um, so you don't have to wait weeks I know before they said that um, if you passed you got a big envelope and if you failed you got a small envelope you don't have to wait the two weeks anymore, so you're going to walk away knowing if you passed or failed. And they say usually it's preliminary because it can change. If it does change, it may be by one point. It's not going to change by 20 points. So if you walk out and you got a 76, chances are you're fine. But if you walk out and you know you have a 75, you're right there on that cusp, uh, there might be some reason for concern. You might want to wait to see if you get the big or the small one. You know, um, So you might feel super defeated while you take this test but please trust me taking a really really big deep breath pace yourself the amount of time that that they give you is plenty so you don't need to rush you can do this you spent two years of your life in front of uh the computer or however you did completed your education and you were doing those clinicals so you've proven that you can do this so just pace yourself 
and a lot of uh, what I've realized too is when I feel like I'm not doing so well that's when I really knock the ball out of the ballpark so just pace yourself you are more prepared than you think again if you need any help my email is down there contact me via email leave a comment here feel free to like share and subscribe and also hit the bell there because I'm going to be adding some more videos on my career series so you've got this just have confidence and you will do fine all right